<clears throat> excuse me, listening to Law and Gospel on this August the 10th in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm Pastor Tom Baker, and with me is Pastor Wes Reimnitz. Hi, Wes. Hi, Tom. How are you? Well, my throat is a little bad this morning, but the more I talk, the better it gets. So, yes, I've Forget been it. having this cough. In fact, my wife and I both have it, and it's taken a little while to get lost, but it's getting better. And so we're ready to go ahead today. Today we're going to be talking about something that's very near to me. I, I don't know if all of the listeners realize that I am a Canadian. I was born in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. I did go to college in Ann Arbor, uh, Fort Wayne, the seminary in St. Louis. But I am not at all boasting about Canada. It's really become a very, very liberal, liberal and unbiblical country, according to the rules, particularly by its Supreme Court. I was in Saskatchewan doing a lecture on the weekend that the Supreme Court decided that gay marriage was okay. It wasn't a vote of the people. It was a vote of a bunch of liberals on the Supreme Court. And Canada also, we had programs up there, but anytime we would talk about pro-life, we were taken off the air. Canada would not allow programs of a pro-life nature. In fact, there was a pastor who was arrested on the west coast of Canada because he had put up on his church sign that homosexuality was a sin. And he even had Bible verses. So this is how far Canada has come. But one area has really slid into uh, the, the devil itself. What is that area, Wes? Well, it was interesting. I ran across this article that talked about Canada's suicidal slide. And I knew that you were from Canada, so I knew you'd want to take a look at it. What's, what's really in particular about this uh, article is it starts out, ideas have consequences. What has happened in Canada with this right to suicide? Right. The article by Joan or John Stone Street puts it this way that ideas have consequences and it is also true that bad ideas have victims. And he says that there's nothing better uh, of that connection between the bad ideas and its victims than assisted suicide. In no other nation today are the bad ideas and their victims more aggressively embraced than in Canada. Now, what does David Brooks expose? Well, the monstrous Canada so-called medical aid and, and dying regime has become enacted in 2016. Yes, originally, Canada, what, what was permitted originally? The request for medical aid in dying to those who had serious illness or in advanced or irreversible decline, the unbearable physical or mental sufferings uh, whose death was reasonable or seen. So... It, in other words, they had some very strict criteria for who could request suicide by a doctor. But since the law went to an effect, what has happened? 
this was the staggering one. The number of Canadians killed annually through this suicide thing. They've gone from about a thousand a year to over ten thousand a year. In fact, in twenty twenty one, one in thirty Canadian deaths was by assisted suicide. And only four percent of those who applied to die by being killed by a doctor were turned down. And then the question is, were all these people terminally ill? Were they all suffering from serious and irreversible conditions? Yeah. Well, that was the thing that uh, David Brooks exposed in an article at the Atlantic this month when he talked about the uh, the, the terminally ill. Uh, Yes, he tells the story of a man whose only physical condition was a hearing loss, yet he was put to death over the objections of his family. Another person who had leukemia, what did he write? Yeah, he's suffering, experiencing mental suffering, not physical. So I think if more people cared about him, he would be able to handle the suffering because of his physical illness alone. And yes. You know, well, you know, a comment I want to make is, is many people have perhaps a physical uh, disease or ailment, and it may seem like they're alone at, at times. But that's not a reason to go out and commit suicide. No, in fact, most of the reasons people are asking for in Canada to allow themselves to be put to death are contrary uh, to to God's word. In fact, a healthy 37-year-old who was suffering from a schizoaffective disorder and is unemployed, here's what he said. Logistically, I really don't have a future. I'm not going anywhere. And he was awaiting approval for assisted suicide. You know, what what comes to mind is, is the story of Job. He certainly went through a lot of suffering, and yet I don't, we call him saying he wanted uh, suicide assistance. Well, and he had friends around him too, uh, although even his wife, you know, objected uh, to what was happening to him. And finally, he had objections to God, and it was in the reading for this week where God took him on a trip through the universe and said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I told the waves to go no further? And and Job learned his lesson pretty quickly. In, in other words, simply put, Canadians who need help are instead being helped to kill themselves because they're depressed, depressed, lonely, or mentally ill. And this slope keeps getting slipperier. Brooks described patients who have been pressured by doctors and hospital staff into killing themselves for what reason? <laughs> to avoid medical bills. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but, you know, it just comes, comes down to the dollar, huh? Yes. In, in fact, the Canadian Parliament, which is really unbiblical, their special committee on medical assistance in death, they recommended extending the suicide program to mature minors as young as 12 years old. 
Now that reminds mm. me of what schools are doing with minors who do not think that they were born in the right gender. What are schools doing? Well, they're, they're encouraging them to get sex changes uh, exactly. at an early age. Yes. So the writer observes, this is what happens. When a society takes individualism to its logical conclusions. Now, what is meant by individualism? Well, the question is no longer should they state to those who are suffering uh, an end of a life. It's individualism is what's best for me. I know better than, than you. And particularly, I know better than God. Yeah. Yes. That's the individualism that the church is facing today, where people are making up their own morality. Uh, because with the doctrine of evolution, they think that there is no morality except what they believe to be true. And. I just had a conversation with a woman recently. We got talking about religion and I was talking about, well, it's really terrible the way the Supreme Court has allowed marriage between people of the same gender. And she replied to me, well, it's really up to people to make that decision. And I responded, I said, no, it's up to people and God to make their decisions. And that's the understanding of individualism, that it really matters not what God says, but what an individual says. It really takes away that whole idea uh, of the image of God, and we are created in his image that we're much higher than just a basic animal. Uh, and we are to kill or do whatever we please with. Yes. The question is no longer should the state help those who are suffering at the end of life. It is now whether any degree of suffering is worth living with. The lines between assisted suicide for medical reasons and straight up suicide are blurring, where people are asking to be put to death just because they're going through some suffering that is not medical. Yeah, well, he talks they, about autonomy-based liberalism. What does yeah, auto autonomy mean? Well, autonomy is is automatic. Uh, your yourself sort of idea, uh, and he proposed something called gift-based liberalism which acknowledges that each of us is a receiver of gifts, including the gift of life itself. So Tommy is how I see my life uh, is good or bad. The word autonomy from the Greek is autonomos. And what's the word in Greek for nomos? Name. Law. Um, yeah. So what we're dealing with here is a real misunderstanding of the distinction between the law and the gospel. People not only believe that if there is salvation, that occurs by obedience to the law, but they also believe that they can make up their own law. 
that's what it means to be autonomous. And therefore, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it, it, it is making itself unto God. I, I go back and think about the comments that we've made over time that there's really only two two religions that that are out there. One is is God based upon the promises that he gives to us and fulfills in Christ in the Bible. And the other is mankind, which uh, you're saying is autonomous. Yes. The writer says that life itself is sacred because each of us is endowed with dignity and society has a duty to say, no, society is out of... Uh, suicide is out of bounds. You don't have the right to make a choice you will never be able to revisit. We are responsible for one another. And therefore, that's why assisted suicide is wrong. Now, Brooks still thinks that if it is a health issue a person can make that decision. But why would we disagree with that? Well, how would we know when when the right to life should, should end? Well, I can remember being at the bedside of many critically ill people who were we know we're going to die within weeks or months because of that terminal illness. But uh, the tremendous amount of faith and witness that came out of that was, you know, I can't even begin to to express uh, of some of the people that, I, that I, I was allowed to minister to. Yeah, one of the reasons that people want assisted suicide is they talk about they want to have the right to die with dignity. But what commandment does suicide break? The one on uh, thou shalt not murder. Exactly. So now we've got a whole government saying that you can commit murder and that's dying with dignity. That's not dying anymore with dignity. But you ought not be surprised because in Canada, you can murder children in the womb. And even after they're born, if they have a serious illness, you can just allow them to die. And that's murder. And that's why you really don't want to live in Canada because the people don't have any vote over these terrible rules that are being made by government officials. You know, in, in talking about this, kind of reminds me of, of a pastor that went to visit on Christmas Day, who was out to, with his family going to a Christmas celebration, but stopped at the hospital where a member was dying critically ill of cancer had only uh -huh. days and weeks to live. And her pastor was, of course, there. But the doctor had stopped in to finally give her the bad news that she wasn't, you know, wasn't any more that he could do. He's done all he could. And then after he finished, the pastor knelt beside her bed and said to him that, uh, this was only the beginning of, of life for her and the salvation that she had in Jesus Christ. And uh, what a witness that was to, to, to her and to the family and the witness that she expressed of her faith in Christ. Yes. The, the moment that a country begins setting criteria for when life is no longer worth living, that means it's no longer sacred. 
and a person no longer deserves love instead of lethal injection, you get the terrible idea that led to all of these victims in Canada, 10,000 of them who died of suicide. And that's totally against the will of God. And what would you do if you had a doctor who is a member of your congregation who did assisted suicide? I know what Tom would do. You put them under church discipline. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no distinction between a doctor killing a baby in the womb and a doctor killing a person who is live because he's undergoing some suffering. That's just not possible from God's point of view. So... Canada's Medical Aid in Dying Law, that's what it's called, supposedly limited victims to only those who have the right to die. But it has become a government-sponsored mass suicide in just seven years. And it's not only doctors and hospital staff that encourage people to be put to death for monetary reasons. It's also relatives. Why well, is that? The dollar sign seems to loom large there. The, the estate of the family. Yes. The longer that their loved one is living, the more money they're losing for hospital care, etc. So assisted suicide actually becomes a way for them to make money at the death of their so-called loved one. And why is anyone who goes for assisted suicide, why is that not a loving action? Well, it's not based upon on what's good for the individual. Uh, question I have is, uh, if we are made in God's image, what is it? To, what is it that we say to people? Is what is that image of God that we are made? Yes, and especially Christians have their image restored. And for them to then go ahead and murder themselves, that's a real possibility. I would not do a Christian burial for someone who did assisted suicide. Mm. Why is that? Because they killed themselves. Exactly. The yeah. article ends with... The value of human life is not based on any extrinsic quality. It's based instead on the fact that humans are made in God's image. We belong to him, not to ourselves. And this is ultimately why the slope from accepting some suicides to all suicides is so slippery. It's also why gifts-based liberalism, until it acknowledges the one who gives us life, will never able to keep its footing or help those intent on throwing away this very gift. So it's kind of like a hill that's icy try and climb a hill that's icy or stop from going down. And that's what has happened in Canada. You have this icy slope because of people who don't mind breaking the commandments of killing and murder. And God will have something to do about that, will he not? Oh, absolutely. 
It kind of reminds me of Paul's epistles to the Ephesians. In chapter 2, he says, By grace you have been saved through faith, not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, let's say, much in both. And here we go. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, and we should walk in them. And you go to chapter 4, he talks about, Yes, he is a prisoner of the Lord, and walk in a manner worthy of your calling, for which you've been calling. And in chapter 5, he says, Be imitators of God, beloved children. Walk in love as Christ has loved and gave himself as a fragrant and offering sacrifice to God. So we definitely, as, as Christians, carry that image of Christ with us. You and I, as pastors, have a number of times visited a shut-in who really is alone. The husband had died. Perhaps there's no children or they live far away. And the shut-in prays that he or she would be taken to heaven. We can pray that, but we don't help them with committed suicide. So thanks so very much in helping us, West, with this terrible law in Canada of assisted suicide, where 10,000 people died last year. I'm Tom Baker. Join us tomorrow for another Law and Gospel Conversation. Until then, God bless you. Listen to Law & Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law & Gospel, please make your check out to Law & Gospel and mail to Law & Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri, 63132, or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.